Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Ultima 7 Part 2, Serpent Isle. And I have a bad feeling because I just saved. Let's talk to, uh, hey, hey, you moved on me. Let's talk to Master Ducio. I am Ducio, the Master Artisan. What is thy business? Uh, tell me about uh, being a Master Artisan. I have an apprentice. I have a... Eh, uh, phone call, that's unimportant. Sorry. I have an apprentice. I have automatons to help the work pro progress. That makes me a master. I am able to create or repair anything. I make what the mages need. That makes me an artisan. If thou hast need of the master, ask me. If not, ask Topo. Tell me about uh, your business. What dost thou need? To buy? To look? To talk? Um, to look. Looking is free. Inspect the automaton made goods. I have everything from cloaks to baked goods, ceramics to swords, and many things between. Let me know if thou dost wish to buy anything. Uh, tell me about, uh, your automatons. One that bakes, one that sews, one that smiths, all from Tarisio. They work hard. Do not talk back like Topo. Um, anything? If the mages can speak plain enough to explain what they need, I can make it. Magical apparatus, swords, whatever, I can make it. They enchant it. Tis fair. Uh, magical apparatus, you say? I make all the apparatus for the mages, all different. Every mage wants something a little different than the next. I can tell thee who a piece belongs to just by looking at it. I remember everything I've made. Dost thou have something thou wishest me to look at? Uh, yes, actually, I do. Hmm, this is a piece of lab apparatus that the mages use. In fact, this one was one of my first masterpieces. I thought it had been destroyed. I might ask how thou didst come by it, but I won't. I do not want to know. Vasculio hath been dead for years. Vasculio? Not good, that one. Sought to teach, sought to reach beyond life and rule death. Not good. The council killed him many years ago. I thought they had destroyed all his equipment after they found the grave empty. But mayhap Ensorcio took it. Ensorcio? Ensorcio was Vasculio's apprentice. Too much like his master, that one. Exiled now. Here he spends his time drinking away his sorrows on another island. Yeah, kind of like the main island. Well, let's talk about Topo. Mine apprentice, scrawny boy, large ambitions, big mouth. But he doth work hard when I yell at him, shows promise. Tends to be a bit lazy, though, must teach him better. Make certain he learns as much as he thinks he knows. Uh, tell me about Torisio. Torisio is an adept. He makes automaton guards and servants. He does good work, almost like a master artisan. But he needs magic to make everything work. I gave him a good deal on the metal he needs. Now I've got three hard workers made of metal. Not a bad deal. Tell me about uh, swords. Do not have much call for them. Not magic ones, anyway. But I have a few. Unless it is a special order, mine automaton makes it. For something non-magic, talk to Topo. If it's magic, talk to me. Uh, grave empty. They say he rose from the dead. They think he is looking for revenge. I think the council secretly decided to burn him. No one can bring back the dead from ashes. Uh, let's ask about magic. Dorisio doth not ask about my work. I do not ask about his. All I know is that his spells are old, not anything created by these mages. Thou wishes to ask more? Ask Torisio, if he will speak with thee. Uh, deal? Art thou a master? No. Then do not ask what deal I gave to others. I give to others. Bad manners. Alright, uh, old? Very old. Maybe as old as the serpent ruins. Maybe not. I'm not a mage. Uh, tell me about the serpent ruins. What dost thou think I am, a f teacher like Feta Biblio? If thou wishest a history lesson, go go to him like any novice. If thou wishest to work for a, the work of a master artisan, stay. I do not have time for such questions. Uh, tell me about Feta Biblio. Feta Biblio teaches the young mages. He keeps the library of magic. He knows the history. Speak to him. Do not bother me. Uh, novice? If thou seekest knowledge, thou art a novice, one who seeks to be taught. I am a master. I do not teach. I do not need teaching. If you're a master, doesn't that don't you teach your apprentice? I'm not a novice. Okay, goodbye. Come again, m maybe. Welcome back. What is thy business? Uh, business? Uh, talk. Talk is free too, but I'm a busy man. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, bye. Business by. If thou seest something, 
Thou doth like, tell Topo or me. If thou desirest something I do not have, let me know. I can either make it for thee or direct thee to someone who can. What dost thou care to buy? Uh, cloak, sword, shovel, torch, pick, bucket, pitcher, lamp, cloth, bread, rolls, and cake. Nothing. Okay. Perhaps another time, my lady. Alright, goodbye. Da. Ah! Wrong buy. Buy. There we go. That was the right buy this time. Alright, let's see. Well, I kind of wanted to uh, see if this healed. It does! Hey, alright. I like knowing where free healing is. Oh, we got someone here. Oh! Hey, this is Tarissio himself. I'm Tarissio, a mage of moonshade. I'm not a sociable man, so this... So this will be brief. What dost thou desire of me, and at what price? Um, I got some stockings here. I beseech thee to turn over to me that which is the instrument of humiliation against a woman who hath done thee no harm. They believe in my lover... Columna, and they were stolen by the by the bandit Stefano. Columna's stockings can be used as evidence of our affair. I neither know nor care how thou hast come into possession of them. But know this, I shall have them. These stockings are of no use to thee. I know thou wilt do the proper thing. Within thy chest beats a human heart. Thou art a woman of feelings. So too am I a man stirred by strong emotions. Give unto me this thing. Wow, this is just like all of a sudden. Okay, um, let me think about it. And together we shall share a night of passion the likes of which have never never before been told in story or song. Ugh. No. Surrender those stockings to me. Nope. Thou dost not trust me? Then be on thy way. All I wanted were the stockings. After all, Columna is more of a woman than thou canst ever hope to be. Oh, ho, ho. Well, you'll be getting yours one of these days. Uh, Tarissio. I'm Tarissio of Moonshade, adept mage and master of life spells. Tell me about Moonshade. Moonshade is in many ways a perfect city, a perfect example of civilization with that highest form of government, a majocracy. Right, majocracy. A government totally controlled by mages is the only sensible form of government. Mages have a holistic understanding of the world that makes them far more suited to the responsibilities of government than any mundane could ever be. With Filbercio at the head of the Council of Mages, things are accomplished quickly with a minimum of politics. Right. Council of Mages? Do not even raise this topic. I have no stomach for the political games with which one must play in order to win a seat on the Council. Tell me about politics. Of course, nothing ever gets done without a little politics. One's enemies and allies are constantly shifting. That is why Rodoluncia and I have formed a sort of coalition, wherein we both work to protect each other's best interests. Allies and enemies, you say? Of course, in the realm of politics as well as the realm of magic, what is one today may very well be the other tomorrow. Tell me about Rodoluncia. Of course, our working together hath led to a few rumors, such as the way of politics, but even partners disagree. For instance, she is convinced that there is some sort of connection between thee and this other stranger who visited us, Batlin. I feel like we've, uh, talked to you before. Before we should have talked to someone else. Well, tell me about Batlin. Rodoluncia was quite repulsed, yet fascinated with Batlin and his secrets. To think of it, to think of it, makes me wish to offer thee a word of advice. Um, I'm always up for advice. What uh, kind of advice? Rodoluncia is not the sort of woman that thou dost want angry at thee. Mine advice to thee is that whatever she wants, thou shouldst give it to her. Right. Sure. Uh, secrets? While Batlin was here, he exhibited some sort of power or talent or knowledge. Rodoluncia is now obsessed with it, although she will not speak much about this with me. Okay. Partners? Partners with Rodoluncia in politics, but partners with Columna in love. Sure. Uh, tell me about Columna. Our love must remain a secret. This saddens her, and myself as well. Which is why I'm telling you, a stranger who could go blabbing it about to everyone under the sun. There are those who would come between us and who plan against us. Her heart was touched by a song sung by the Lady Gweno. Well, tell me about Gweno. She came passing through our city several weeks ago. From what I hear, she is a most unusual and interesting woman. 
Anyway, what do you think of that, uh, Iolo? Uh, let's see, plan against thee. I do not wish to burden thee with my personal problems. The less said of these things, the better. Oh, come on! I'm the Avatar! I go around fixing these things. Alright, fine. Tell me about Filbercio. He's a shrewd and stern ruler. A highly skilled mage. He's not someone thou, sh thou wouldst want to cross. Okay, tell me about being an adept mage. I come from one of the long... The longest family lines of mages in all the Serpent Isle. That is how one tells a good mage, thou must know. By his family line, good mages are, are a result of good breeding. My father always said that. Family line? A thousand years ago, our ancestors performed tricks to amuse peasants. Hundreds of years ago, they were the most trusted advisors to kings and rulers of the land. Yeah, I... Somehow I don't uh, believe you. Uh, let's see... I just wanted to check something, okay? Um, when it comes to magic, the only bloodline more pure than mine is that of the ruling family. Of course, my family was decimated in the Old War. If not for that, I might be ruler today. Old War? According to family records, most of my family members were killed fighting the Daemons. This is a war which brought an end to the age of the two kings. This seems new. I don't think we've heard this about before. Uh, ruling family, you say? That would be the bloodline of the Mage Lord of Moonshade, Filbercio. Okay, tell me about life spells. My personal specialty is spells involving healing and the sustenance of life energies. Oh, so you're a cleric. No, I'm a mage. You're a cleric. Uh, I could buy spells. Of course, I could sell thee a spell. I have recently sold a spell to another person passing through Moonshade. It is just such a business upon which the city of Moonshade was built. With all the experiments and developments we produce here in the... Magical arts, we are practically the center of the world. I accept guilders only. In which circle art thou interested? Ah, uh, nothing for now. Oh, you only go up to seventh. Uh, sold to whom? Why, that fat sage that passed through town a while ago, Batlin. I remember not the specifics of the transaction. You don't even remember what spell you sold him? Alright, experiments. I do not wish to violate the privacy of a fellow mage. But there is at least one mage in town working on, sol on solving the mystery of these distressing teleport storms. Okay, goodbye. Do not steal anything. Sure, I won't. We got some uh, interesting uh, paintings here. Can we look at any of these paintings? I hate that you can't look at these paintings. Got a little sword. Got a naked woman. Uh, interesting color choices there. Uh, a witch in front of the moon, perhaps? Another naked woman. Always want one of those around. Ah, spell! I like the green tinge. Uh, reveal. We got worm hearts, sulfurous ash, and mandrake root. And out in plain sight, a ritual bloodletting device. Uh, over here, we've got uh, a book. Ah, the Apothecary's Desk Reference. Okay, we don't care about that. Alright, I might come back at night to um, <clears throat> uh, tax this fellow. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? There is a building over here. There's a building to the south as well, but we'll get to that in a little bit. There's some interesting plants here. Snowy plant, strange plant, strange plant, more strange plants, lots of strange plants, okay. Ooh. It's a nice glowing green key. I'm glad those guys don't care about that. That's magical wave. Well, that's interesting. Who the heck lives here? They don't have any possessions. How can I tax them? <sighs> it's terrible. Well, I've got uh, something here. Is that a tree I can look in? Nah, it's a dead tree. There's a key there. Let's see. Are you going to get mad? Nope. Did not get mad. <laughs> Nothing in either of those. Another book. Oh, the Apothecary's Desk Reference. 
Let's see if we can uh, unlock this door here. We can. That's handy. Let's go downstairs. Whoa! Well, that was a trap. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I do have some uh, things in here. Let's, uh, let's see. Um, well, first of all, where is my bag of reagents? There we go. Let's get these reagents in there. There's some worm hearts there we'll put in. All right, now let's go ahead and... Uh, Heal myself up a bit. Ah, yes, we've got this one. Oops, that's my pocket watch. Uh, let's see, what is this? It's a Zareen. Not sure exactly what that is, but uh, let's go ahead and put these in here. All right, and now we need to find uh, Shimino's stuff. There we go. Might actually be uh, running a little bit low on bandages. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and grab this uh, key as long as we're here. I rather wish the bandages healed a bit more. I will be honest. Oh, Dupre got uh, trashed as well. Let's go ahead and fix him. Oh yeah, too heavy. I'm going to get that a lot. Uh, that's probably good enough for now. Uh, Shmino, let's just get you up to, uh, like, 15 to 20 or something like that. Should be good enough. Nineteen, and ILO. Looks like we all took about the same amount of damage. Stupid traps. All right, there we go. That's good enough. We've got a scroll here. I've made the most wonderful discovery about the comb that I took from the empty-headed ruler of Fawn. No longer shall I be forced to content, content myself with the bumbling attentions of Melino, my pitiful excuse of, for a husband. For upon using the comb on myself, I have become beautiful and desirable. No one will ever guess now that Mosh and I are twins. Now I may use my wits for better things, like the adept Tericio. Columna. Oh. Oh my, you know what? I think we want that. Let's go ahead and take that. And here we've got Time Stop. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Um, have anything else around here? <laughs> There's something down there! Alright, let's see. Can I see exactly where this room is? Um, Alright, no, it doesn't look like there's any uh, hidden stuff around here. Let's get out of there. Uh, let's go talk to uh, who I assume is Columna. Hello there. Greetings, mundane. I am sorry, but thou hast mistaken me for someone else. Thou couldst not possibly be speaking to me as I am a mage. And thou art merely mundane. Honestly. Hey! How rude! Alright, let's talk to this guy. Hello there. Greetings, Mundane. I'm sorry, but thou hast mistaken me for someone else. Thou couldst not possibly be speaking to me, as I am a mage, and thou art merely a mundane. Such impudence. Man, how rude. Alright, now, I feel like there should be some way to get into this gar- Aha! <laughs> None of these have anything in them, right? Nope, doesn't look like it. Hmm. 
A locked chest, huh? Unlocked. The Comb of Beauty. I will take that. That is mine now. Ha ha ha. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Uh, we'll leave them be, whatever. We'll come back, talk to them later. Uh, what do we have in here? Cloth! Ooh, I like, I like cloth. We've got uh, two wizards in here. After many weeks of fruitless study, I can c only conclude that the blink spell simply no longer works correctly. Nine times out of ten, nothing at all happens, while the results of the tenth occurrence are best not pondered. The most obvious reason for these failures is these is this blasted weather we have been experimenting. Experiencing, I'm sorry. Maybe when the storms lessen, I can divine the answer. Until then, I will continue in my attempts to find... Mm, excuse me, find the answer. Notes this day by Gustachio. We've got a book here, the Apothecary's Desk Reference. Um, I like that they're both uh, using the same thing at the same time. Well, let's see, we have Ritual Bloodletting Device. Uh, we've got some money, only seven guilders, though. Got a little, oh, little uh, greenhouse here. Oh, hey, whoa, lady! Jeez, lady. Go ahead and grab these arrows, though. Silly Naga. We've got two crates here. Uh, empty. And empty. And summon. Ooh. Don't mind if I do. Does not appear to be anything else here, though. Didn't mean to go in there. Let's go upstairs. Not much here, but we do have a, a telescope. Let's see where it looks. Um, it looks at the goblins. You can even see one of the dead ones that I left there. <laughs> ah, it's good times. All right, let's uh, let's talk to you. A pleasure to meet thee. I am certain, but I have no patience for idle tongue wagging. Forgive me, but this is an absolute waste of time when there are pressing matters which are pressing. How rude. How about you? Oh. What are you doing here? Alright, goodbye. Wow, that guy is actually n not... that bad, since he actually talks to us. Not much of that way. Got some doors here. There is a key here. Let's go ahead and grab that. No one minds. Well, that's an interesting podium. Got some paintings there. Got a tree. Got a couple people. Let's see. Uh, let's look at this book. Let's see Apothecary's desk reference. There's lots of uh, um, reagents on the tables. Uh, I've got a scroll of heal. I'll have to take that at some point. Why? Oh, we're close to another cavern. Huh. Magic compass. Well. Let's take it. No one complained. I like how there's garbage laying around here. It's a whistle. It's an amulet of protection. Don't mind if I do. Um, let's see, this is cloth, right? That is cloth. Let's grab that. There's a brush, a banana. Don't care about the banana. There's actually quite a few uh, um, abacuses, abacuses you could pick up here. Let's turn that into a bandage. Let's turn that into a bandage. That? Oh, that's just a chair. I thought that was something on the floor. Let's go ahead and grab these uh, bandages. Look in there. Yes, that's that. Okay. 
Well, they're not mad at me. Let's create food. I'll probably come in here later to, to pick all this stuff up. We've got a book. What color is thy blade? I believe we have read that one. We've got the Apothecary. Another copy of the Apothecary's desk reference. Mine Experiments by Teldrono. This book belongs to Teldrono the Mage. For thee, bright reader, I have been deep in the heart of darkness in search of the way. The way to reverse or even negate the effects of blood spawn hath been my quest. Stoneheart is also on my mind, though art, thou art right so. So right. By the way, dear reader, if thou shouldst know how to obtain some, contact me immediately. I thank thee in advance for thy kindness. Let us begin, for I am losing track of what thou art interested in. Thou art not afraid of dying, art thou? Well, then I shall proceed and tell thee what all this truly concerns. The more I would experiment with it, the closer I would come to success. That was mine intuition. Well, I must admit it did not work. Bloodspawn is bound to n have some side effects. I do not know which yet. The heart of the matter, if I may say so, dear reader, is that thou art about to take possession of a secret. Darkness may fall upon thee at the very same time. I recommend thou beest extremely careful. A fatal accident is easily triggered when manipulating those forces. In the heart of the mountain, I found the red-orange mineral. I collected samples, and after many a transformation, I turned it into the forbidden reagent. Thou art certain, dearest reader, that, that thou fearest death no more? I want to make it clear this is nothing like what thou hast seen before. Many a mage's life was taken away. How did I turn it into a powerful magical reagent, thou askest? Yes, indeed, how? Oh, I remember, thou hast only to crush it into a fine powder. Then thou dost combine the powder with fresh human blood. Tis just so. This powerful reagent, too powerful for my fellow mages, who are fools enough to lose their lives, enable thee enables thee to create some spells. It might make possible the spells to flay men's minds, or set swords into dancing death, or to decimate entire cities. Mass death. Well, think of it. Thou may... Well, think... Well, think of it. Thou mayst be able to make matter disintegrate, and even call lightning to thy service, if I recall correctly mine experiments. These are the powers of blood spawn. Dear reader, thou art now ready to experiment, or ready to lose thy life. Remember how carefully thou shouldst be when carrying it. Finding safe means to avoid blood spawn side effects. Uh, hold on a second. No, oh, nothing. Uh, blood, spawn, blood spawn side effects is of primary concern. Herein I did give thee all thou wilt ever need to know. Thou mightest want to be prepared for fits. Experimenting with blood spawn and stone heart will trigger numerous disorders. Many a time did I attempt to delay the onset of the fits. All in vain, alas. The future doth not seem to be a long, shining path. I even wonder how long I will remain sane. I think you've already lost your sanity, buddy. Thou art the reason why I wrote such a book, dear reader. It is for thee to read, and for thee to take our place once I, am, I be gone. This powerful knowledge, painfully extracted from the heart of darkness, must outlive us. Thou shalt continue. Right. My Notebook, Anonymous. The observations enclosed herein are based on mine experiments. Reader, for thy sake and thy thirst of no for knowledge, I have decided to provide thee with the following accounts. Long ago, when I accidentally landed on this world, the primitive sentients living here erected a temple to me and my chariot. But they were boring and impetuous. Soon the cats emerged as more likable as a more likable group than any other creatures. Thereafter I was to begin some experiments on them, quite successfully quite successful indeed. My liking for these cats caused me to contemplate how to widen and strengthen their intelligences. Thereupon I set out to modify the power generator. Thus began the experiments. The generator provided the feline with a more obdurate life energy, one which was most difficult to suppress. The cats die, yet with stubborn energy return once again to life. The side effect is that strange glow which surrounds them. After several manipulations, I was successful in, in increasing their lives up to nine times. Thus, no one would be able to truly defeat them until their ninth life. The source of all extra life resides in the power generator. Dear reader, make of mine experiments what thou wilt. What the hell? <laughs> Brigio's Book of Astonishing Things. Did I read these? Read this before? I don't think I have. A compiled volume of items of interest, both magical and mundane, by Brigio of Moonshade. 
In this volume, compiled for easy reference, are some of the many fascinating con constructions I have found during my researches. These items range from interesting uses for mundane items to fascinating miscarriages of magic. Wands, a trio of terrible weaponry. The three identified varieties of magical wand all seem to have been made for the express purpose of changing the combat weak spellcaster into a battle-ready automaton. And for those with, those with the ability to keep them from losing their potency, no small feat of magic, mind thee, but simple for anyone capable of crafting the wand in the first place, they are perhaps the most formid formidable weapons of their size. Fire wand. This wand releases a bolt of flaming death. According to all known texts on the subject, the carnage was called amazing. Lightning Wand. The effect of a bolt of lightning as it bursts forth from the wand is as devastating as its counterpart, the Fire Wand. However, according to one of its proponents, the corpses look and smell much less offensive. Magician's Wand. While only slightly more lethal than the typical bow, this wand is rendered quite effective due to two interesting fa facets. Its damage is of a most magical nature and more than powerful, in, uh, powerful against monsters with a predilection for challenging mages, and it never ceases to function. If thou art interested in power and duration, this is the wand for thee. Fire Doom Staff, lethality itself. This staff, which hurls exploding fireballs that actually seek out a target, is perhaps the most lethal of all magical weapons created in the era of human gargoyle cooperation. Human gargoyle cooperation? But as with most of the m more powerful magical magic weapons, its limited life means it may fail thee at the worst of times. Glass swords, a historical legacy of death. These single-use swords will almost always kill any creature in a single blow, but they are seldom useful for a second opponent. Other miscellaneous magical weaponry. As a general case, any person with a ma modicum of magical talent can identify magical weapons, armor, and other apparatus by their pulsating glow. Often, however, the color indicates even more about the item than merely the existence of the enchantment. For example, a green field often denotes a poisoning weapon. Burst arrows. An arrow of myriad targets. The arrow functions as a normal arrow, but upon impact explodes into a thousand flying shards of death. Venom Dagger, the assassin's tool. This shimmering green dagger is actually the enchanted tooth of a poisonous sea serpent, joined to the hilt of a normal dagger. Its envenomed blade injects a slow poison into its victim, but it frequently breaks. It is the perfect assassination weapon. See Aligner's History, Assassination of Baron Johann IV, page 54. Aligner? Oh... Stone Harpy, Unnatural Beast. The Stone Harpy is the creation of the twisted mind of the Magus. It is reputed to be magically triggered by the close approach of any creature. Is that, uh, like the same text that was in Ultima 7, just with a different byline? Let's see what spell we have. Translation? And we have the Magic Compass. It is said to be the legendary artifact which guided Erstam the, maid, the Mad during the voyage to Serpent Isle. To use it, thou must set the compass upon the ground and then chant the mantra, Ileg Ort. According to legend, the compass will show thee the way to travel, but only if thou art worthy. As for myself, I have never been able to make the damn thing work, hence I am donating it to the seminarium, Filbercio the Mage Lord. He is not worthy! Let's see what this looks at. Oh. This. I do not care about this game. I cannot quit out of it. I don't know what the hell this is supposed to be. Alright, let's uh, head up in here before we uh, end the episode. And I suppose we could... Uh, feed people. Alright, and with that, um, I think in the next episode we'll actually talk to the people here in the seminarium. See you next time, everyone.